I'm Bob Campbell, and this is The Real Review. Hello, I'm Bob Campbell, and uh, I'm about to, uh, to taste the 2019 Tamata Coleraine from Hawke's Bay. Uh, that's got a retail price of $120. We planned on getting the 2018 vintage, which I'd rated highly uh, for this tasting, but um, uh, I called in at the winery uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, on the day the wine was bottled, and they let me generously let me taste uh, taste a wine off the bottling line, and I thought it was absolutely delicious. So I begged them to uh, uh, to, to let us have the 2019. So I, I was told I was the first person outside the winery to have tried it. And it's not released, I think, until around about March. Uh, well, Coleraine is sort of one of those wines that needs no introduction. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a famous wine. I think it's, I'd describe it as New Zealand's most iconic wine. And I do that very thoughtfully. I've got a definition of like, iconic. And, uh, and to me, it, it, it fits that definition to a T. Uh, it's, uh, 82 was the first vintage. And uh, they've be making the why I don't know how I can't remember exactly it might be three or four vintages where they haven't made coloring but it's made pretty well every year um, it was originally a single vineyard uh, uh, wine but now it's coming from, comes from distinct, distinct sort of plots from the oldest vineyards that they that tomato own on the on the Havelock Hills it's the sort of wine that collectors and investors love because the, the demand exceeds supply and um, uh, and there's always a, a bit of a lolly scramble when uh, uh, when the, when the wine's first first released, especially from from terrific vintages like 2019, which is really a, a top vintage in in Hawks in Hawks Bay. You know, great nose. Just just lovely volumes of of cassis and dark fruits and just lovely and there's some spicy notes in there too just wonderful just to sit back and and just sniff it who needs to drink it whether you've got a wine like this For the volume of the intensity of aroma your wine is surprisingly um, uh, surprisingly elegant rather than blockbuster it's uh, it really is I get a sense that that it's 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 not uh, it's still got to sh show plenty there's still plenty to show and it's it's a little bit locked up but it just is delicious to, to drink now um, actually I, I, I get off the track slightly the the lieutenant to uh, Coleraine which is our tear uh, I, I tried that, and that is just absolutely ready to go. Just gobs of fruit, and it's a, just a lovely, big, seductive wine. Um, so I, I recommend drink the Awatea now and the Coleraine later, uh, if if you're not going to put it into auction and make a profit. Which is uh, it's the sort of wine that's for collectors and investors. Salivate over. Um, uh, yeah, so. How would I describe that? Ripe cassis, berry with spice. Um, elegance on a grand scale sort of just about sums it up. I think it's probably one of the best vintages I've ever tasted. Um, it's got plushness and power with great potential. And uh, I scored the wine 98 points. Uh, and it deserves every one of them. The food match from winemaker Phil Brody is... Melt in your mouth slow cooked beef short rib, buttery mashed vegetables and some braised mushrooms with roast beetroot salad on the side. That sounds great and I know for a fact that Phil's a, a pretty accomplished cook so uh, I might see if he can prepare that for me sometime. Cheers. <laughs>